everybody and welcome back to the girl with girl bookworm so today i have for you my may wrap up part one i'm coming at you from a little bit of a different angle because right now my desk is like book overload i'm like kind of scared like to show you so these are books that are supposed to be getting donated to Patrick's school and these are all like books that i've either hauled or like need to haul so it feels a little chaotic over there and so I was like, you know what? I'm already on the floor. Let's just film on the floor. So here we are. So this month has been really interesting in terms of my reading month because I feel like um, it's less than I have been reading, which is perfectly fine. I'm not complaining there. But a lot of the books that I read, I really, really loved, even though I did have some DNFs. So I definitely found some favorites that I feel like might end up becoming favorites for the end of the year already so like I feel like it was at least a really successful beginning of the month even though there were some things that I did not necessarily love. So some of the books that I talked to you about in the end of my April wrap-up that I was still reading. I was still reading Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmis. I ended up giving this one three stars. I did not love this one as much as everybody else did. It had like the perfect premise of like woman scientists in the 1960s turns like Food Network star type of character and it just didn't do it for me I just there's a lot of like obvious like dis where they constantly are commenting about you're a woman you're too you're not smart enough to know this because you're a woman you don't know that because you're a woman you can't possibly be here on your own accolades because yeah you guessed it you're a woman wait you're a single mom too no, 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 no. So like all these things and it was just like constantly getting beat over my head. And I was like, okay, I get it. She's a woman. I get that times are tough for her, but like, can we stop? Like, it just felt like it was hitting me over the head. The writing style is very different compared to anything that I'm really used to. So like it took some getting used to the writing style to truly kind of understand the story. And the dog has a perspective at one point. And I just felt like I liked the very first like 100 pages or so and then after that it just started to kind of go downhill. I liked the overall plot. I just wished that I jobbed with its writing style and what it was trying to do a little bit better, if that makes sense. So three stars for this one. I did finish The Change, which was another unfortunate three-star read for me. I read this one for NetGalley. I had high hopes because that was another book that was being loved and praised out the wazoo. And I just, it didn't work for me. It was another, like, big, chunky book. And it just was too long. Like, I am okay with a book being long if it's worth it. But... If it's just going to go on and on and on for absolutely no reason, it just loses me. So the change is about these women who find out that once they kind of hit menopause, they kind of have these special abilities and these special powers. And these women come into each other's lives at the same time as they find a dead body. And they finally realize like that they, they are brought together to kind of bring justice for these dead women that like aren't really claimed and aren't being really like looked after in society um, because the police are trying to just like brush it off and like these women are like their families are not getting closure so they figure that they're going to figure out who these dead girls are be able to tell their families to get their families closure and to also kind of get justice for these girls um this sounded fantastic the premise sounded fantastic i was really into it in the beginning and then by the end it we kind of lost the steam of the powers the powers kind of come back into play at the end, but like in the middle, it just felt like it was very draggy. There were so many characters and I started confusing all of them. And it just was a storyline that kind of just got way too dragged out. If this book was maybe a hundred pages shorter, I think I would have liked it a lot more. So unfortunately, three stars for the change. Apparently my end of uh, April was bad because I also finished Court in the month of May that I had started in April. And I also gave this one three stars. So it's so funny because I started this video like I found so many favorites. But I also had a lot of duds too. So this one was three stars. This is the fourth book in the Crave series. I've mentioned it before that this is the last book in the series. Even though I know there's two more. Technically one of them is a book that takes place between book one and book two. And then the other one is kind of like a year later. Like this is kind of like 
the end of what the first four books were trying to accomplish, that problem has been like dealt with and solved in this one. And I believe when the sixth one takes place, it's like a whole other issue, like kind of like a spin-off type of thing. So um, I'm done with the series and I'm okay with it. I really liked Crave. I loved what it did for me when I read it. And I loved that it ended in the cliffhanger that made me want to keep going. But like, I kind of wish that I just kind of stopped. Um, I really loved the school dynamic. And once it started kind of going off into like, not necessarily priorities of school and this whole other bigger world problem, I just kind of, I've lost my steam for it. I listened to this one on audio and it was a really long audio book, obviously. And just by the end, I was like, this is too much, too many characters, too many problems, too much. And you know me, I'm not a huge fantasy reader in the first place. So this is already out of my comfort zone. So then by the end, I just, I was done. So three stars. I think that a lot of people will love this one. If you've loved the series and you're a fantasy reader, just me, it just, it didn't, didn't work out. But I'm happy I'm done with the series and we're going to leave it at that. Now, this is when things started taking a turn because I read Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson. And guys, this book was fantastic. I was kind of nervous because this was another one that I felt like was like a loved book. And I felt like I was like, I went from the change, which was loved and the lessons in chemistry, which was loved. And I didn't love either one of those. So I was really scared to try this one. And I could not get enough of this one. This was so good. So we are meeting these two kind of estranged siblings. Their mother has passed away. Their father passed away years prior. And they go to the funeral and um, they need to hear the will. And instead, the mom kind of has left this video, not video, like this like re re audio recording of her life story. And she says that the kids have to listen to it together in the presence of this lawyer. And so even though they have this tumultuous relationship with each other because they haven't been in contact with each other in years, they are listening to their mother's story and they're listening to each other. And it's such a beautiful story. I could not stop flipping the pages. The chapters are super duper short, which you know, I'm all about short chapters. So I flew through this one. I couldn't get enough of it. And this will probably be one of my favorites of the year for sure. Then I read um, My Life is Missing by DJ Palmer. This is his newest release. It just got released this month. And it out of the three that I've read, because I didn't read his debut novel, but out of the three that I've read, this is my favorite. And I know <laughs> Chloe and I totally disagree on it. Um, she messaged me after she finished it and she was like, we need to talk because you love this and I didn't. Um, so I could not get enough of this story. So we meet our main character and he is going to New York to stay with his family for like a little mini vacation. It's him, his wife, and his two children. His wife has been dealing with some severe insomnia and he's like, we just need to get away. We need to regroup, refigure each other out. But he goes to go get pizza and he comes back and he finds his son's teddy bear in the hallway. And he's like, that's weird. My son doesn't go anywhere without this teddy bear. And he goes into the hotel room. And his family is gone. They're missing. And he needs to figure it out. So we're following his perspective. We're following his wife's perspective. But we're also following his wife's perspective from before she disappeared. And I, like, I couldn't stop flipping the pages. Like, there was a point where I did put this down because I was reading other things too. But, like, I really was gripped by this story. I was very engaged. The ending I did not see coming at all. Um... I was hooked. So I'm pleasantly surprised with this one because the last one I was a little nervous because his last book, The Perfect Daughter, was a very slow paced book. And I was like, I don't know if I want another slow paced book. I don't know if I want another slow paced book. And I, this was not slow paced at all. This was a cat and mouse chase. And I couldn't get enough of it. So one of Chloe's biggest things was that she felt like it wasn't very realistic and that there were things in here that just like didn't add up and wouldn't be ethical in real life but to me like I just like there's sometimes fiction books that just suck me in so much that I'm not really thinking about how realistic they are I just am here for the adventure in the story um and that was the case with this one where I just I couldn't care less if it was completely realistic or ethical or anything I just kind of was like this is a page turn I can't wait to find out what's going to happen so I really enjoyed it and I gave this one five stars I don't know if I said I gave this one five stars so these two were five stars for me um, I read 
Learn My Lesson by Katie Robert. This is a very fast paced book. I read this one basically in a day and a half. Like I started it one night and I was already like 48% into it after like an hour. Um, this is the sequel to Desperate Measures. This is a extremely erotic type of fiction. So if you are looking for like a nice little closed door romance, you're not going to get that with this one. This one is erotica. So these are following Disney villains. The first one followed if Jafar was in love with Jasmine. And this one is Hades with Meg and, um, they say Hercules with Hades and Meg. And, um, it's kind of like a contemporary set story. So it's not like you're going back into the Disney world world. Um, you are going into a contemporary ish setting. And in this one, um, Hades and Meg are out to dinner and he basically asks her to seduce this waiter who happens to be Hercules. And eventually it kind of ends up in this like three-way entanglement situation. I don't know if entanglement is the right word. They are now interwoven together, the three of them. Um, I did not love this one as much as the first book. Um, this one just didn't feel like it had as much depth as the first one. Like, I know that sounds silly talking about that with a romance novel, but like the first one just felt like there was more to the story. This one just felt like sex every page. And I wanted more of a story and more of the world versus just watching them have sex 24-7. Um, so I think where I'm going with this series in general, so I own book one and book two. My original plan was going to be like, read one buy one, read one, buy one. And obviously that didn't happen because I read Desperate Measures in August and here we are in May and I'm finally getting to the sequel. Um, but I feel like I don't need to own these. Like they are quick, smutty, fast reads for when you need them, but I can read all of them on Hoopla, which is actually how I've been reading them anyways. I actually haven't been reading them physically. So I don't really feel the need to own them. So I think I'm just going to continue reading them on Hoopla because they just, they don't seem like something that I really want to necessarily be purchasing for my collection. So um, I gave this one three stars, but yeah, it was, it was a decent time. Then um, I read It Could Be Anyone. Um, this one is fantastic. So this one actually comes out at the end of June. I read this one from Neck Out, not end of June end of May. I read this one thinking it came out May 10th and um, I felt bad because I posted like, oh, get it tomorrow. And then the author was like, shh, it got pushed back to the end of May. I was like, oh, sorry. Um, so that one comes out the end of May. This is by the same author who wrote Finding Tessa, which I gave five stars to earlier in the year. And I gave this one four and a half stars. This one is following this wedding. So when we first meet them, um, we're at a wedding and they're dancing and taking a picture and suddenly the groom drops dead. And it could be anyone. So we are following the other friends of this friend group and trying to figure out who could have possibly killed this groom. So we're following like current timeline of like undercovering what's going on, but we're also following the past of what led them to this. So we're almost like figuring out what everybody's possible motive is and why they would do this. And it was just addictive, fast paced, really great. Um, I just, the only reason why I didn't give it four and a half stars is there is one thing that a character does that I really don't like. And I know that like, they're all kind of unlikable in their own ways and they all do things that aren't great. But like, this just like, didn't feel 100% necessary. So I gave it four and a half stars instead of five. But basically, if that little plot point wasn't there, that tiny little plot point wasn't there, it would have been a five star read. So really, really good. If you are into thrillers, you definitely want to check that one out. So then I read One of the Girls. Um, one of the Girls is also a book from Nat Callie. I've been like really trying hard to get through my Nat Callies. This one comes out in June. And this one, again, four and a half stars. This one was really, really good. Um, we are following these girls who are going to Greece for a hen party. We know in the very beginning that somebody is being taken away in a body bag and then it flashes backwards to leading up to that point to figure out who is in that body bag and why and who did it. And again, this is another like fast paced, very atmospheric. Like I felt like I was in Greece with these girls I just want to, like, go to this villa, eat some olives and drink some wine and not get killed. But, but 
Um, there are obviously secrets being had and just, it was another really fun time. I feel like it's going to be the perfect summer read, especially if you liked The Lion's Den, which was like kind of a similar setting of like girls going away for like a trip through like the Mediterranean, I think that you will love this one as well. So four and a half stars for one of the girls. And then I read um, The Wedding Veil by Christy Woodson Harvey. This was a purchase that I kind of made for like on this, like kind of like a spur of the moment type of purchase. This was um, when I was about to like end my book buying ban kind of thing. Um, I found this one for $16 on Amazon for a brand new hardcover that just got released this year. So I kind of like couldn't help it, but buy it, especially it's about weddings. It's a dual perspective of things that happened in the past and a current timeline. And I was like, I need to get this one. I've also loved peach tree, um, peach, the peach tree bluff series by her. So I was like, you know what? I, I need to, like, I think, there was one book that I read by her that I DNF'd, and I think that that was just like a fluke um, because I've loved everything else that I've read by her. So this one is following a girl in our current timeline. She's about to get married, and things start to happen that just kind of make her life kind of unravel a little bit. Um, but we're also following her grandmother and trying to find life again because her husband has recently died. And then we are in the past following Edith and Cornelia. Edith is kind of the main owner of the wedding bill in question. And then Cornelia is Edith's daughter. And again, women trying to find their way. I feel like that is like the tagline of this of like women trying to find their way in life. And I gave this one five stars. <laughs> so it's easy. Like, even though I had a lot of three stars, I had a lot of four and a half and five stars way more than I ever have. And this was another book that I just felt like I couldn't put down. The current timeline was probably my favorite more so than the historical fiction part because I love Babs. She added perfect humor. I love Julia and her setting just made me like blush and it just was so sweet. And I just, I loved hers. I just loved this book. So if you are somebody who loves like dual timeline perspectives and historical fiction and weddings and you'll love this one. So definitely check that one out. Um, I technically started Come Fly the World finally, and I DNF'd it. I found myself just like tuning it out and not really caring. I was listening to it on audio. I just think it might be just not the right time, which stinks because I waited so long for my hole to come through with that, but I just, it's not doing it for me. And then I am still currently reading The Violence by Delilah Dawson. I've got less than 200 pages to go. I'm on page 339 out of 500 pages. This is a story about, um, it's like after COVID. So this does mention COVID. So if you don't want COVID, well, not want COVID, but if you don't like COVID in your books yet, don't read this one. So this takes place a little bit after COVID. We think that we're in the clear. And then this other pandemic starts called the violence where basically people just abruptly get extremely violent and basically murder anything that is right next to them. We are following three women. We are following one woman who has two kids. She's clearly in a very domestic violence type of situation. Um, we're following her daughter who obviously is experiencing the abuse that her mom is going through, but she's also possibly getting involved in a domestic violence issue herself. And then we are following their grandmothers, like the main character, like the main woman's mother. So like the three generations and we're following in them as this pandemic continues to get worse and trying to figure out what the violence is and how is it affecting people. And I think it's a really great thing because it's also kind of looking at that symbolism. So like it's more like not as I know it's like actually like violence, but it's really looking at generational trauma and its effects on the world pretty much. So it's an interesting read. I don't know if it necessarily needed to be 500 pages, but I've been liking it so far. Um, I was reading Battle Royale by Lucy Parker, and I think I'm going to DNF this one. Um, I'm about 25% into this. I don't actually know where I am specifically because I'm reading it on my phone, but guys, like this is so wordy and so all over the place, and it should be my perfect read. Baking, a baking show, royalty, a royal wedding, romance. I should love this book, and I just... It is dense, it's wordy, it's all over the place. I just, 
I think I need to DNF this one. And then I'm currently listening to Such a Good Wife. This one is about a woman who ends up having an affair with a man at her, like, writing group. And then he ends up being murdered. And she's got to figure out a way to kind of, like, unlink herself from him. So that way they don't realize that she had a connection to him. Because she obviously does not want to go away for his murder. So it's been interesting so far. I'm about 33% in. I'm hoping to finish this one soon. So those are all the books that I read in the beginning of May. So yes, I had a few duds here and there, but guys, like the fact that I had two five star reads and two four and a half star reads. Oh no, I had one, two, three, no, I had three five star reads and two four and a half star reads. I will take that because that's amazing. That's essentially like five five star reads in my opinion. And I don't remember the last time I've had five five stars in one half of the month. So even though I've had some duds, I've had some real winners. So let me know what you've been reading down below and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye everybody.